Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to get started using Feedsy and this plugin lets you display unlimited RSS feeds on your WordPress website. I'll be leaving a download link on the screen and in the description. So let's begin. From the WordPress dashboard, I'll hover over plugins on the left and click on add new. Let's search for Feedsy. And now we can install and activate the plugin. So we have finished the installation process. Let's start by configuring feed categories. Let's move to the left hand side and click on feed categories, then add category at the top. Let's give the category a title. I'll call it WordPress. Now below this, we need to enter a feed source for this category. I'll use a WordPress blog as my feed source. I'll just get one of my bookmarks. Let's use this one. So this is the theme I'll blog. I'll copy it and I'll go back to WordPress and paste it in the field. And if you're using a WordPress website, be sure to add slash feed at the end. To add multiple sources, you'll just need to separate them with a comma. So now we can go to the second source, which is the code in WP blog, and I'll copy the link. And now we can go back and paste it in the same field. So a link that's not valid will be removed automatically. So if I publish this category as it is right now, we should get an error message that says that the last link was removed. And in this case, it's because we don't have feed at the end of the URL. Let's click update to publish our changes. Now we can go back to our feed categories. We can just click the link on the left hand side. And also, if you want to, you can click on this button to validate your links. So any link that's not valid will be removed. And over here, we have the slug for the category. So now we are going to add our feeds to a page. Let's close this link and I will hover over pages on the left and I'll click on add new. And we can close this mode out. So I'll click on the X and I'll click on skip. Let's add a title. I'll call this WordPress feed. Now I'll also click on this plus icon and in the search box, I'll type in feed Z and we'll use this one. So this is the feed Z block and we need to add our source to this field. We can either add a URL like this with feed at the end, if it's from WordPress, or we can click on this down arrow to select a category. So let's use this one. I'll click load feed. And here's a list of feeds from our sources. On the right hand side, we have our block settings. Under content, our first option is feed source. Right now it's set to our category. If you want to change it, you'll just need to enter a new source and click on load feed. Next, we have number of items, which is set to five right now. But if you want to, you can change it by moving the slider up or down according to the number that you want to set. The next option lets you select how you want to sort the feeds. You can sort by date and time, ascending and descending. Then we have feed caching time, and this ranges from one hour to 15 days. And next we have item options. And first we can select how we want links to open. So we have new tab and same tab. I'll just keep new tab. And the next option lets us show or hide the title. I'll keep it on. And then we can select a title character limit. So if we type in 50, for example, we'll see that we have a shorter title. And if there's no value, there's no limit. You can hide the post description with the next option. You can also limit the characters in the description. Here's 100 characters. And if the value is zero, there'll be no limit. Filtering items is a pro feature. It lets you sort your feeds by keyword and date. I'll leave a link to FeedZ Pro in the description. And finally, we have the advanced tab and it just lets you add some CSS. So now we can move on to the style tab to configure its options. Let's go to item image options. And the first option here is display first image. If available, we can display it either with or without a fallback image, or we can select no. We can also set the thumbnail dimension for the image. So it's set to 150 right now. We can change this to 50 to see what it looks like. Let's change it back. And the final option lets you select how HTTP images are treated. So if we access the drop down menu, we'll see the available options. So now we can move on to the next section, which is feed layout. This is also a pro feature. It lets you select how your feeds are presented in a grid. You can also do this with CSS code if you want to. Let's move to the advanced tab. And here we have feed items options. So with the first option, you can control how additional meta fields are displayed. So if we leave this field empty, all meta fields will be displayed. If you type in no, none will be displayed. You can type in a specific meta field to display it. So here's author. And now I'll remove this and I'll type in date. If you want to add multiple fields, 
just separate them with a comma. You can also configure how additional meta fields are displayed with multiple sources. Just enter the sources in this field to configure its settings. You can also click on this link to find more information on additional meta field values. With the next option, you can ignore the first number of items of your choice. So we just hit the first one on the list and I'll hide the second one. I'll go back to the first one. So we're only hiding one item now. And there's also a lazy load feed option for the front end. Next, we have refer a URL, which is also a pro feature. It lets you configure referral URL parameters. So now that we are done configuring the feed, we can go ahead and preview it and we'll do this in a new tab. So here's our WordPress feed. So if it's satisfactory, we can go back and publish it. I'll click on the publish button twice. So now I'll show you how to use shortcodes with FeedZ. First, I'll go ahead and create a new page. Let's call this shortcode test. Now I'll remove this section and I'll add a shortcode block. Just type in shortcode in the search box. Here it is. And I'll begin by typing FeedZ's base shortcode, which is FeedZ hyphen RSS between two square brackets. Now to display a feed, we'll need to add to this shortcode. So let's add a space and I'll type in feeds, then the equals sign, quotation marks, then the feed source, make sure it has feed at the end if it's WordPress, and then quotation marks again. So once our shortcode looks good, we can go ahead and preview our feed in a new tab. All right, so we can see that it works. We can see our five different articles. Now I'll show you guys how to modify the shortcode to tweak the feed results. So we are gonna be adding to this. So I'll open a page from FeedZ's documentation. I'll also leave a link to this in the description. So you can refer to this document when modifying FeedZ shortcodes. Here you'll see multiple examples of how shortcode parameters are used. So we are gonna be using the max parameter. Let's limit the number of feed sources to two. So now we can go back to the WordPress editor. Let's add a space after the last quote. I'll type max equals quote two quote. And let's preview this in a new tab. Now we can see that our feeds have been limited to two. So now we can go back to the WordPress editor to publish this page. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to import posts with FeedZ. Let's hover over FeedZ at the bottom and click on import posts. And now we can click on new import at the top. Let's start by naming our import. So I'll call it FeedZ import. Okay, so that's good. Let's configure the sources. You can either use a feed URL or a category. I'll use the same theme aisle blog. Again, if it's a WordPress blog, just make sure you have feed at the end. If you wanna add multiple URLs, separate them with a comma. Here's an example. So now I can remove this. And to use a category, click on the use feed category button on the right hand side, and then you can choose your category from the drop down menu. We'll just be using a feed URL for this example. So let's keep this one and I'll click on this plus icon to add it. Now we can see it at the bottom. Now, if we click on filters, we'll see that all of the options are pro features. We can filter by keywords, exclude items, and filter by time range. Let's move to map content. Here we can select a post type for our imported feeds. We'll just have to select one from this drop down menu. You can also select a category for your imported feed posts. So right now I only have one category, but in your case, you may have multiple. Now, the next option lets us select a post status for our imported posts. There's publish as well as draft. Now we can move on to the next option, which is post title. This is the title for the generated posts. And you can see that we are using a magic tag for the item title. We can customize this further by inserting a tag from this list and your post will not be generated if this field is empty. The post date can be configured as well. So let's go ahead and add a magic tag. We can use item date or post date. I'll use post. And the next section is content. This one refers to the content for the generated posts. We have an item content magic tag. And of course we can add to this by clicking on the insert tag button. This field is also mandatory. And then we have featured image. So we can add a featured image to our post by clicking on the insert tag. And then we can add an item image magic tag. We can also use a URL to add an image. The final section is general feed settings. We have auto delete, which is a pro feature, remove duplicates, and we can also configure the items count. 
So how many feed items should we import from the source? Right now that number is 10, but we can change this to about four. Okay, so that's good. Now if we scroll down, we can either preview our import, we can just save it, or we can save and activate importing. So I'll click on this one. So we're back on the import page. Now we need to run our import, so I'll click on run now. The importation was a success. Let's refresh this page. And four posts were found and imported. Now we can go ahead and view the posts. So let's go to all posts. So here's the entire list. We have four of them. Let's view this one. And this is how they look. Yours may look different depending on the theme that you're using. All right, so now you should know how to get started using FeedZ Lite. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.